I'm sure this is not a big surprise to many of you, but I love my horses very, very much. They bring me so much joy and I just love being around them. But tying into that, I also love learning. And I'm gonna do whatever I can to learn to be the best rider that I can be. And now I feel like I'm really ready to learn the secrets of becoming a more effective rider as well as to have a better understanding of why we do what we do when we're in the tap. And today I wanted to give you a little bit of a glimpse into this new foundation type of learning that I've been working on lately. Hello my equestrian friends, it's me Lisa the Budget Equestrian. Welcome back to today's video. And in case you're new here and you don't know who I am, I'm Lisa and I'm the Budget Equestrian and I help you to make the most of the time that you have with your horse. And today I wanted to give you a little bit of a glimpse into this new training that I've just learned about. Okay, we all love to ride our horses, right? But we don't just throw our leg over the horse and off we go pretending that we're gonna have the perfect ride. Well, it's something we might dream about, but that doesn't happen all the time. And if you're like me, it doesn't happen a whole lot. And there are hundreds of books available for equestrians that we can read and learn from. And unfortunately, that takes a lot of time. And sometimes you don't get it, you know? Sometimes I don't get it when I'm reading these books. Sometimes it's really hard to transfer what you read into training your horse yourself. So let me give you a glimpse of something that I just learned. All right, now this might seem a little bit boring, but it's important to have a real understanding of what these terms mean in order to be a more effective writer. So in the glossary, they start out by talking about the importance of the hindquarters. And from the hindquarters, this is where you get your thrust and your power. The thrust and propulsive force and the carrying power governs the thrust. So all of the motion begins from the hind quarters. And for me, this was really important. And just to visualize that all of the horse's power is coming from his hind end. So the next part is engagement. And engagement is putting into gear of the joints of the hind quarters. So once you realize that the power comes from the hind quarters, that's where you get your thrust and your propulsive force from, then comes the engagement. And this is where the joints kind of bend and flex and get softer in order to bend and flex and stay softer. So this is where the engagement comes from. And the weight of the rider is how we adjust the engagement. How about contact? Now contact starts with engagement. Rain contact is the final, not the first point of contact between the horse and the rider. So engagement is the primary part of contact that we should seek. We want to have our horses engaged, and in other words, we want them to do what we ask of them. So a lot of times when you think of contact, you think of the horse being on the bit, and you think of the contact being from the bit to the reins to the hand, but that's not necessarily the whole picture. So when your horse's thrust is interrupted, this is called to collect through elastic contact, and this is governed, again, by your horse's hindquarters. Now the forehand of our horses is the front end of the horse, which makes up the shoulders, the withers, the breast, the neck, and the head. Now, what I've been learning is we do not ride the head of the horse, we ride the forehand of the horse. So basically everything in front of the girth is the forehand. And the next thing I learned about was flexion. And flexion is the closing of an angle of the joints. So our horses all have joints, we have joints, and the flexion is when the angle of the joint is closed, so it decreases in size. A really good example of this is pole flexion, and this is considered lateral flexion and direct flexion. And by practicing, pole flexion affects the entire body of the horse. And like I've said many times, this is just one section of one of the courses. And this class was her class 102, which is the glossary or the terms 
as they're related to horses and training horses. So does that give you a better understanding of the how and why the hindquarters are so important? So this is just one of the sections that are available in the total course. So for me, just learning this much about the hindquarters and the importance, I can see how that'll transfer into the saddle. This course has been created by Jane Frizzell. I hope I'm saying her name right. She created the course that I'm kind of going over today and a couple of other ones that you can find over on Udemy or you can just look in the description box below and I've left a link in case you want to check it out for yourself. Well, I'm cleaning up horse poop. And she's been a writer herself for the last 50 years. 50 years! And of those 50 years as a writer, 32 of those years has been as a professional writer. She's even been called an FEI writer's secret weapon. How awesome is that? And after I completed the first two courses, class number 101, actual horse training and writing, the starting point, and class 102, definitions of terms in horse training. I like this because it really helps me to understand the why of why I'm doing this. And while that might sound boring, it really isn't. Because this is where you're really going to get a deep understanding of what you're going to be asking of your horse before you actually get into the saddle. So think about this, writing is faster than speech. So when you're in a writing lesson with your trainer and you're trying to absorb everything that she's telling you, writing goes a lot faster than just taking in all of the information that you're getting from your trainer. So having a complete understanding of what you're gonna be asking your horse to do is really helpful if you have that information ahead of time before you get into the tack, don't you think? By going through the glossary of terms, I'm really learning the importance of having a complete and thorough understanding of how everything works for being a better writer. So throughout the course, the instructor shares so much valuable information. And if you really pay attention, there's a lot you can learn. Then you can take that newfound knowledge that you've gathered and apply that the next time that you're riding your horse.